Yo, what's going on, Nomads and Drifting Podcast listeners? I'm Brian. And I'm Monica. And welcome to the Backspace Nomads Podcast, where we share our nerd for gaming, movies, and all the dork in between. It's September 23rd. This is episode 75 of the podcast. And we want to know, what will it take for you to quit gaming? Let's start the show. All right, Monica, are you ready to talk about Tiger Woods and Tiger Woods like finally winning a PGA Tour after five years? What? No, no. Sorry. <laughs> I really want to start a golfing podcast lately. And that's not OK. No, I'm not ready. Uh, OK, well, if you're not ready to talk about Tiger Woods, then tell me what will get you to stop gaming? What, hang it all up and quit it. So. This is a tough question because I have I have like had periods of my life, Ryan, where I have stepped away from gaming in a large way, you know, yeah. um, predominantly it's been because I'm either so busy with uh, making m- amounts of money, Tons sometimes of money. very low amounts of money, but still <laughs> amounts of money and just some type of amount of money that I've been focused on making. And, and that's prevented me from being able to play a lot of games. Um, and then other times I am like really going after relationships, Mm -hmm. which doesn't allow for, I feel like a lot of gaming because, you know, unless they're totally cool with just playing games with you, you kind of have to pay attention to them. Yeah. So I guess for me, what would actually make me completely call it quits Mm -hmm. i would have to say a company like telltale games going out of business (laughs) oh man well monica it looks like you're gonna be gaming forever yeah i'm i'll be gaming forever for sure but something like that you know a a company that puts (laughs) heart and soul into their content that creates unique experiences, a company that you really feel you can, like I've cried playing Telltale games, you know? Something like that going away could make me stop gaming altogether. Well. What about you? Oh, me? Yeah, you. Well, me, I don't, you know, I don't think I'll ever go out on the bottom of like people leaving the gaming industry or a company leaving. I think I want to go out with the company doing something for us as gamers that they promised. And it's like, it will complete me as a gamer. If I finally get to play through half-life three, I think that that will be, I got nothing left to do in gaming. You know, half-life is one of those games that made me fall in love with like the first person shooter. Um, Taught me that games could be more than, you know, just a lot of shooting and action. They could actually have story. And make you think Half-Life 2 is an amazing second step in that series. And I've been waiting for Half-Life 3 for the past decade, I think. And along with all the other gamers. Uh, So I'm I'm waiting for Half-Life 3. I'm going to play Half-Life 3. And then uh, I'm going to take my gaming rig, unplug it from uh, the wall and drive off into the sunset. Oh, my gosh. Brian, when this happens, can we like put you on a boat? And then you're just like in your swim trunks and everything. And we put you out and I, I fire an arrow into the boat and it lights it on no. fire. But then you jump out. Oh, I we can't. Come on. This I, is like the death yeah. of gaming and Brian. Yeah. What if you hit me with the arrow? You're shooting an arrow at a boat with someone in it. I'll I could very be. I could be the, like the, ten, the tender of the boat that sets everything on fire. Don't uh, no No, no, no. I'll practice. You'll practice. We'll create a little awning for you. A <laughs> straw. <laughs> All right. If I have a straw awning for you to aim at, then sure. Okay. That great. will be uh, what will get me to do it. You can shoot all the arrows you want at me. Well, I guess there's not a lot that would help make me quit in gaming. Like, and I'd love to hear from our listeners. Mm-hmm what it would require to make them stop playing video games altogether. Never again. They would never, ever, ever play again. What would it take? 
for real. Uh, I definitely hear about it because I like as a diehard gamer, it really makes you think like, what would it take for these people, these freaks to really give it up? That's all we got left. Our freaks. Our freaks. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about Captain Marvel. Oh, Earlier, okay. this- <laughs> Earlier this week, uh, Captain Marvel's trailer, the official trailer uh, was released and they they said that they were going to break the Internet. Monica, uh, what would you think about the Captain Marvel tra- trailer? Did it break the Internet for you? Well, I I did feel as though it had this very doom and gloom soundtrack behind it. Look, stop being so realistic. YouTube is going to strike this video if you keep doing that, all right? I know. That's way too close to the real size. <laughs> look, I got to look out for the Nomads channel, Monica. You're out here trying to get laughs, but. <laughs>, <laughs> Look, OK, outside of the soundtrack, just sounding like what is going on? Is a Dremel tool being used on like an unruly <laughs> toenail? I don't understand <laughs> what <laughs> what is happening here. I did think that the Captain Marvel trailer looked pretty fantastic. I'm mm-hmm. not going to lie. Now, there was one element of it that made me roll my eyes a little bit and that was the notice of like car chases and alien invasions and i'm like okay come on like this is your 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 foreshadowing the foreshadowing it's like no cut it out i yeah. this is a trailer you don't need to do that maybe you do i don't know what how stupid have people become come on guys we don't need people to tell us what's going to be in an action flick okay please yeah um, but uh, I wasn't like completely hyped up on this trailer. Um, personally, I I don't know what it is about it. There is, and I'm someone who I've been looking forward to like Captain Marvel coming out for a long time. When they announced that this is going to be one of the things that uh, is going to add to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, uh, I was like, why? Very, why, were, why were you looking forward to it? Uh, there's just something that's so intriguing about the character. She is a um. Uh, a female hero hero who's just not strong, who's just not like, you know, has all these power, but she's someone who's like, just doesn't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. Like go screw yourself. I'm gonna kick your ass. And even like strong women inside of the universe, they don't necessarily have that, like, you know, that attitude towards their powers and towards the world uh, that they live in. So like, I I was pumped about that character coming. Mm -hmm. Um, She's a very like nuanced character, a lot of a lot of background, a lot of problems she deals with. Um, this is just like a fantastic character in the comic books. I was like, I'm ready for this. This is so cool. I'm glad that they chose her to kind of be one of the next superheroes to carry along the um, franchise and stuff. Um, I watched I watched the uh, trailer, right? And there's one thing that sticks out to me. And, you know, it's one of those things. Once we see the um, movie, it might be different. There is like zero charm about uh Captain Marvel in this trailer. Uh, Tony Stark is kind of somebody who like doesn't care what anyone thinks about. It. I'm just going to do it my way, whatever. But he has like kind of a wit to him. Captain mm-hmm. Mar or Captain America is somebody who's like, it's me against the world, but I'm always going to do the right thing. There's like a little bit of like a charm to him. I'm like, what in this trailer? Like, like draws me into the character. There wasn't really any of that for me. And it's just a trailer. It's just the first one. Um, but I, I, for some reason, I just wasn't hyped up about this trailer as I've been for like every other Marvel movie so far. I agree with you. I actually feel like outside of the (laughs) the music and, um, you know, just the, in general, the intro into what an action uh, or comic film might have. um, She came off as strong, but she also came off as not that interesting. Yes. Yeah, Yeah. And the thing is, is like, I don't, I I hate the idea that strong women have to just be stern. Yeah. I don't like that because that's not true, you know? Um, But she did come off as stern. She came off as like, the only, the only element that I would throw back at you is it seems like she's trying to figure herself out. And when you're Mm -hmm. that internal, when you're looking that internally, you're probably not going to have a lot of emotion. It is the first trailer. Maybe we'll see more personality in the next. Um, 
But I don't know. I, I, I can see what you're saying for sure. Yeah. And I don't want to be thrown in. Like there's a huge movement online of uh, I don't want to be grouped in with the people where it's like she didn't smile at all. I'm not one of these guys out here who's like women should smile. Well, like, you know, all the guys who walk by women are like smile. You know, <laughs> I, like I, I'm, I'm not one of those guys. Um, even on her Twitter, like, you know, she was getting the backlash for that. And she started posting a whole bunch of like male uh, leads from Marvel movies where they're looking stern, but like Photoshop to smile on them and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, like, I am not one of those assholes. It's just like, as a character, I know there's redeeming qualities about her. There's no way they made this movie without her having a bit of charm that like connects you to the character. Didn't come across in the trailer. Yeah. yeah. Um, would you fight her? Like, did you see her in the trailer? Like, did her thing? Are you ready to throw down with Captain Marvel? I don't know. I feel like, uh, you know, initially when I was watching the trailer, I was like, there's no way I could fight Captain Marvel. But <laughs> there was one uh, scene where it's showing the back of her hair and it's like, like perfectly done, like kind of curly, beautiful. And I was like, eh, if she spends that much time doing her hair, I could probably rip that shit out. And so you I thought, so? yeah, no, I imagine I was like, I could just grab a fistful of it, pull it back just a couple punches to the face, you know, I, I might be able to do it. Yeah. Uh, I don't do think you did, think? Monica. Did you oh. see the part where she flipped on top of a subway cart and then like shot laser beams out of her hands? Well, I just She's won't the, let her get her hands on me. Good luck, dude. She's like the Goku of the Marvel universe. She's <laughs> absolutely insane. There's no way you're fighting this chick. You see her punch the old lady in the face. <laughs> this thing. She gives zero fucks about who you are. Um, you're not ripping anything out of her head. Okay. What do you think about her outfit? Looking cool? Um, I like her outfit. Uh, it looks sturdy. Yeah. <laughs> One thing I love about a good outfit when I'm dressing myself in the morning is how sturdy do I feel? <laughs> <laughs> but I did think she looked cool. Does have good support? <laughs> yeah. Oh. How how condensed do my legs feel in these pants? No, um, but I, I did think that she looked cool. She looked cool as a character. I, I yeah. felt I felt like I'm like, oh man, Captain Marvel's pretty rad. Like I might want to be your friend. I don't know. What do you, how did you feel about her her get up? Um, I like it overall. It's a very like she looks like a fighter pilot in outer space. Like she's got this really military uh look going on. The one thing I wish they would have brought from the comic books is She's got that like golden chevron going across her chest. Um, they usually extend that all the way to her um, arms and wrap it around. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they did it. I think it makes it look it's it's a much sleeker design to do that. Um, she kind of looks like boxy because of it because it just stops at like um, her chest. She does. And, she did look a little boxy. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So I don't know if that was just like, you know, you can't take a, all the comic book elements because they have to be practical. Like, does this actually look good when it's moving out of person? Mm -hmm. um and like you know not just drawn exactly how we want for a frame um but i thought like the colors and uh like her first outfit you see her in this like black and green uniform looking thing um all of that like just looked really good i, I just like as a nerd you know i'm like design elements i'm like i just wish i would have seen this but i'm not that much of a fanboy i don't i don't want to fully commit to that lifestyle so i liked it i thought uh a lot of it was cool yeah uh you going to see this one? I think so. I think I will. Uh -huh. Um, but I will also be interested to see more trailers. Yeah. Now, uh, I know the uh, PlayStation came out, uh, re-release of the classic edition. What do you think Captain Marvel would think about the re-release of the 2018's the classic PlayStation for a hundred hundred dollars? Oh. The classic PlayStation released in 2018 for $100. Uh, I think that um, as Captain Marvel is walking around, you know, shooting laser beams out of her hands, getting feisty, having her kind of boxy outfit on, she would be like, man, you know what I wish I could be doing? Playing the original PlayStation. <laughs> and and she'd be like, but it's a little kind of it's kind of expensive for this time. And mm -hmm. like maybe in the future, they'll re-release it for one hundred dollars and I will be able to buy it on a budget. And I think she's going to be really stoked because I feel like after she's done doing all of her badass, you know, badassery in general, she's going to be yeah. like one of those chicks that goes to like flea markets and everything. 
Okay, I, I believe that. I, I don't think she's going to need to, Monica. She's been in outer space for a couple of decades. You know, this movie's taking place back in the 90s. She's going to be coming back to 2018 when she finally comes back, you know, to us. Uh, she's going to have oh, a lot of money. I, mess, I messed up. No, you didn't mess up. Oh. At all. She just, I, she's been out of space for a little bit. She's going to come back to some, comp, like, compounding interest on her bank account and stuff. <laughs> She's going to love, she's going to love where this is uh, going with the re-release of it. Uh, Cause she's American. She loves capitalism. We release <laughs> everything, please. That's what she stands for. Um, YouTube gaming this week, Monica has officially shut down and folded itself back into YouTube. Uh, kind of a sad day for the development team that took two years to try and make this thing work, huh? <laughs> oh my gosh i remember when youtube came gaming like they were like oh it's gonna compete with twitch and yeah. at the time i was active on twitch you were active on twitch and i feel like it was like what does this mean and within a week we realized it meant nothing mm -hmm. um so it took youtube a couple extra years to figure that out but um i don't quite understand why youtube took their once top performing segment which was video games and tried to mm -hmm. segment it yeah that always seemed super weird to me it definitely felt like a movement they said it was to compete with twist but to me it always felt like they wanted to separate the gaming content because it was just dominating uh whatever type of algorithm anyone that was on YouTube was getting suggested gaming stuff because there was just so much watch time inside of the uh, gaming channels mm -hmm. that uh, their algorithm just promoted gaming more than any other type of segment. Um, I think there was a definite movement inside of the company uh, to want to move to more vlog style content, content that is more um, kind of like uh, episodic and kind of like series and stuff, like letting their creators like make something instead of just playing video games and putting it up there. Uh, and I think that they uh, kind of realized how wrong they were because they have absolutely lost the uh, momentum that they had to Twitch. Uh, Twitch is kind of, to me, and maybe it's just come inside of the bubble, uh, when I think gaming, I don't think YouTube, I think Twitch. Yep. Um, I used to think both. Mm -hmm. I used to think both uh, until they split off. Split off. And, yeah. and what ended up happening is that a lot of the shows, even a lot of the prolific YouTube gamers that were there, ended up creating different types of content in order to compete. And that mm -hmm. type of content that they're putting out is like, I'm going to say it, it's trash. It's like, yeah. it, it's just, it's responses. It's, it's like focusing on like pranks. It's yes. just, it's embarrassingly bad. Um, and what ended up happening is like gaming kind of, as Twitch has been growing and growing and, and really um, implementing more onto their platform, YouTube gaming has, has become pretty much obsolete. I feel like. Mm -hmm. I think there was a shift. Like, I think that what really turned the tide and made them really rethink their uh, direction on this uh, would have to be with Fortnite and the popularity of Ninja just skyrocketing to not just one of the most popular gamers in the world, just one of the most popular people in the world. Yeah. Um, I think all the kids out there like stopped wanting, they didn't want to be Casey Neistat anymore. They wanted to be Ninja. And when Ninja is pulling 130, 150 concurrent viewers on Twitch, it really, I think, woke YouTube up to like, what are we doing wrong? Like, are, are we going against the demographic that we want? Because as much as people don't want to believe it, YouTube's main demographic tend to be in high school. They tend to yeah. be younger kids who um, have all day to sit there and watch YouTube videos over and over and over. And not necessarily, you know, people like you, me and you, Monica, where it's just like we don't have the time and the day to watch all the content on YouTube. No, you're absolutely right. Quick, quick notation here. My friend has a uh, two-year-old mm -hmm. and there's YouTube for kids and he just watches it. That's yep. what he does. He just clicks on different videos. It's YouTube for kids. I mean, 
YouTube isn't necessarily for someone that's as busy as us. We go on to Twitch and we go and watch a watch a channel. But um, you're 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 absolutely right with 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 YouTube being there for the content that people can just easily access. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you what do you I mean, with with YouTube gaming blending back into everything else, how do you think that's going to impact? Um, I definitely think it's going to make people reconsider their abandonment of YouTube because people like Markiplier um, have and other uh, content creators have started to stream on Twitch because one, because they're getting big deals from Twitch to do so. Mm -hmm. um, But it really was showing YouTube that they're losing their main content creators. Um, And so the people who have big gaming channels there are probably going to be less prone to make the jump. I know a few uh, Fortnite content creators who always felt shunned on YouTube, even though they're bringing in these big numbers. Um, they just didn't see their suggestions. Um, rates go anywhere, even though they're getting all this watch time. Mm-hmm. And they were looking to move to Twitch. And some of them, you know, were tw- you know, would do a couple of streams and go back to YouTube, do a couple of streams, just to kind of test the waters. I think they're going to stop now. I think it was really smart of YouTube to showcase just how many people are watching like Fortnite content at the exact same time. Uh, these numbers are bigger than Twitch numbers for people watching Fortnite content. They're just watching different type of uh, a different type of content. It's not live yeah. stream. It's a video. But it, it really, when you see that number of how, how much access to an audience that you have and how much of a potential audience reach that you have, as a content creator, it makes you go, oh, YouTube is still viable. Um, them deleting the gaming uh aspect of youtube gaming and this whole different app that was really confusing i think is them trying to like throw up a signal to all these content creators like come back home come back into the fold um we're sorry and you you know gaming on youtube uh is going to be 2019 that's going to be a year for you yeah what about you i don't know i don't know with youtube i i really don't i feel like the way there have been so so much pro so much protest around the way that they treat a lot of their big content creators. Mm -hmm. Um, It seems like there's a lot of, um, despite how big they are, it seems like there, there is a lot of picking and choosing, right? Um, Mm -hmm. You have some, some of the largest content creators on YouTube that just continuously cannot monetize their own channels, you know? YouTube has gone through a ton of troubles over the the course as they've gotten bigger, as they become more of a almost television station in -hmm. comparison to a a, a URL. Um, So with that being said, I feel like they're starting to try to treat their content a little bit more like that in the Mm -hmm. sense that they do not want their content to elicit negativity towards them as an organization. And that is taken away from a lot of as as much as I hate to say it, um, a lot of what like the gaming content realm does, you know, um, we're co- like gaming streamers and gaming YouTubers tend to not be the most astute and mature group. How dare you? Oh, that, uh, fine. How <laughs> you can how dare me? But it's true. (laughs) And with that being said, you know, in order to facilitate to to those types of of crowds, like a lot of times I feel like that's what YouTube has tried to move away from. I don't know. They might be saying come home, but is home still the same? You know? Yeah, I hear you. Um, Yeah, I I don't think it is. People are trying to say that YouTube is more of a Wild West in terms of what you can do on it versus Twitch. And I just don't believe that. Um, I think YouTube is playing it a little bit looser than Twitch in terms of rules, just to kind of like, like, hey, come back over. But like, it's coming down. It's going to come down on them just like it does on Twitch. Because you're right. We're not a, you know, you take people who have been not part of mainstream culture in terms of humor and attitude and like the way we talk and the stuff we joke about. And then you throw a spotlight on it and you give them a bunch of money, they're just going to turn that up and turn it up because they want to make more. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I I don't know. I just think that there, there's big move. There's this huge movement to just put a big focus back on gaming on YouTube. 
And I think it's also um, on Twitch too, where they're starting to break up the IRL section. It's like these two companies are like doubling down on the gaming curators mm -hmm. and saying, we want to, we want to put the spotlight back on you guys. This is what it's about. Um, and I, for one, as someone who uploads to YouTube for gaming and for Bass Space Nomads, I'm excited about that. Like gaming is a legitimate part of, of the culture, whether or not, you know, we're making the most artistic valued uh, content out there you know <laughs> we're not making movies but you know it's content that people want to watch this is what people are interested in and i just think it's a it's a bold and correct move for them to admit their mistake on youtube gaming um and just get rid of it because how much longer are they going to keep going down this road and like losing the content creators uh that people want to watch well, the one thing I will say is that anytime an organization makes a decision like this, it's financially driven, period. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, they're not going to pull something unless there are financial gains behind it. So what they are trying to do here is say that by splitting it off, by treating it differently, by segmenting it, there are not financial gains and that yeah. they have to be competitive and that the only way to be competitive is to go ahead and let the gamers continue to run their main site to go ahead and let that exist. And so what a, an exciting time for people that are creating content for people that are trying to achieve something within that creation um, to, to hear that type of statement being made by YouTube. Uh, yeah. Oh, we tried branching you off. We tried to create this whole thing. No, in reality, you, you belong under the spotlight um, and the, and our platform as a whole has suffered because of this, uh, focus. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of financial winners and losers, Monica, I have some news for you. Um, I, I bring this up kind of sadly because I know that it might just cause the end of your, uh, your life as a gamer, but, uh, telltale the adventure story game company that we have come to love has laid off a majority of its workforce going down to bare bones to complete its obligations because they are uh, going into a full closure of their studios. Telltale Games, not making it through the year. All right. I knew this, believe it or not. Uh, I knew this. And I do not want Telltale Games to go away. That's why I said I would call it quits if it's this is my protest. I also don't know if I can follow through with it. But here's the thing. Telltale Games has created story-based content where a lot of times since since PC gaming started existing, there used to be a lot of of um Grim Fandango. Um yeah. Leisure Shoot Leisure Suit Larry. Like these were games that were out that there were kind of story based that that had a a lot of uh, traction. And then as gaming progressed, story based games started kind of falling by the wayside. Mm -hmm. Telltale Games was the first development house that created games that people wanted to partake in that were strictly story based. And yeah. I'm talking like the first time I played The Walking Dead, I was sobbing. I mean, sobbing. I was remembering all of the my my relatives that had passed. Like I was going through some major shit with the way that they told the Walking yeah. Dead. It was amazing. It was. Um, I remember. Uh, oh, I forget what year it came out, but when the Walking Dead was released from Telltale's, it's like the industry stopped, and it was like, oh, you can do other types of games again. Um, up until Telltale had released it. It's like you said, the last, you know, basically once PC gaming went to like the darkness that it to the consoles, you know, the consoles like put a shadow on PC gaming. All PC gaming was about first person shooters. All the story driven gaming that were like point and click action adventure games like went away. And then The Walking Dead came out and everyone started paying attention again. Mm -hmm. And Telltale Games with this brand new company who said we can do this. And they really like were solely responsible for revitalizing a genre that I think one a lot of a generation of gamers had never even heard of, and two people like uh, me and you, where we just we thought these types of games were never going to happen ever again. Right. You know what's interesting about it too is 
I didn't think that they were going to happen again. And I did mm. feel like they felt new to a lot of people. And I think that newness made it spread. Oh, this is unique. This is new. This is like, this is the, uh, the cool, it's like the equivalent of like, oh, did you get your pumpkin spice latte? And did you play a telltale <laughs> games this week? Yeah, I did. And then all of a sudden, you know, they kept creating content and the content was not following them. Now, I have played a handful of Telltale games. Mm -hmm. Okay. I feel like The Walking Dead was a masterpiece. Yeah. I feel like some of the other ones were fun. Mm -hmm. Episodic games have not necessarily kept up. It's hit or miss. And the problem with them is when you hit or miss with an episodic game, a story-based game, a point and click type of game, you, Mm -hmm. if you miss, you're missing out on a lot. You really are. Um, And one of the problems I think that Telltale kind of ran into is that I don't think after the first Walking Dead, I don't think there was a ton of innovation inside of the studio. I think that they bit off a little bit more than can choose. Um, there was how many like how many just Telltale games just all of a sudden started popping up for different franchises. You had The Walking Dead, you had The Wolf Among Us, you had Batman, uh, you had the Minecraft story, you had uh, Game of Gardens, Thrones, Game of Thrones, Gardens of Galaxy. And when you put all this together, I don't think they felt like different games apart from a reskinning of the characters and the setting whatever Mm -hmm. story but the mechanics were like just the same the entire time and while i don't think you need that much innovation for a genre to keep happening i think that they licensed too much and tried to put out too like it wasn't a big event that another telltale game was coming out again you know the walking dead was an event and then they follow the wolf among us is like what else can they do that's a huge event and then Mm -hmm. after that it just felt every every i don't want to say fatigue but just they weren't building up the excitement because it just felt like a reskin of the same system. I, I don't know. Like I, I just, I, even as somebody who enjoyed all the games, um, I was not stoked to play it. I was not out of my mind. Like, I can't wait to get this next one. I'm like, okay. That was kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. I think after the walking dad, the wolf among us was good. And then the other ones, I just had a hard time jumping into. Yeah. Um, I will say, though, that episodic games like there was Life is Strange Mm -hmm. and that game took off. So I still think that there's room for this and Telltale should still be able to exist in this. But the reality is, is that Telltale is is starting to leave us. They laid off over 200 people. They have like a skeleton crew of like 25 people. They gave mm. everyone like three hours to get out of the building and then they were able, or no, 30 minutes to get out of the building. And then they're able to come back in and get their things like for three hours, like the following day. I mean, this was like an immediate decision. It's yeah. kind of scary. It is scary. And it's like you said with the episodic, um, just like those people won't be, you know, showing up to uh, work on the next Telltale Games. You won't be showing up to finish The Walking Dead because that story is not going to be completed as a Telltale game. Um, Everything that they're working on, all the stories that you're in the middle of playing, um, those are done. And it is the suddenness of it is crazy that they didn't have kind of contingency plans in place. It's like, all right, if the company does like, you know, start to go belly up, we have reserves of money here and here to like finish out, uh, you know, this game and that game. Yeah. Um. To the end, and I just it, it's it's crazy. Like you're saying, just how absolutely sudden this happened. Um. I don't know what I've never worked in an office place, but I could only imagine what it would be like to say you have 30 minutes, uh, to get out of this building. <laughs> We're all fired. <laughs> like I couldn't even imagine that feeling. And not even just the feeling, but a feeling when you're working for a company like Telltale where you are creating, it's like a passion project. You know, you are creating stories. You are living and breathing a story and a video game that has something behind it outside of just like, let's make sure that this hand doesn't look weird. These are story driven. And so there is an emotion that's connected to it. Um, it, It's really tough. Like my heart kind of goes out to this team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Horrible. Um, 
you know, they are kind of taking care of the employees that they laid off. They're all getting paid out through the, the year. They're trying to set up job fairs. Uh, but nothing replaces the feeling of when you're uh, passionate about something you're working on and the stories that you're telling. Uh, absolutely mind blowing that this, I felt like this came out of nowhere. I don't know if like you're someone who pays attention to the industry, if this, you know, you kind of saw the clues coming, but I'm not someone who I'm not an industry guy. I just kind of like, let me see what games you got. I'll play them and like, see what's up with it and like give my opinion on it. Uh, Cause this just felt like it came out of the blue. I thought telltale was like a fantastically profitable company. They seem to be like having, they had the borderland series, like another one just popped in my head. Like they had so many good series going on. I just, I thought they were making money hand over fist. Zero idea. The only thing that I would say is that there have been large gaps in between chapters on mm. a handful of their games. And I figured it was just due to the ability to create the content. Yeah. But if you're having a hard time creating the content, uh, I guess my imagination was saying it was story driven, right? Like we want to make sure the story's perfect. Yeah. It actually was probably more financially driven. Okay. That makes sense. So. Well, Telltale Games, we love the games you put out. I guess uh, that does it for our love affair with Telltale Games. Uh, hopefully someone else takes up the mantle of point and click adventures because uh, they really... You know, I, I think they leave behind a legacy of actually taking risks and revitalizing genres and saying, you know, this does work. We believe in it. Let's do it. I think other game companies can really take a look at that and uh, feel inspired by them. Yeah, I agree. Uh, before we go to break, let's touch on Ninja. Okay. Ninja. Let's touch on him. <laughs> a little bit earlier in the podcast, you brought up Ninja and how astronomical his numbers are. Um, Ninja is the first gamer to ever grace the cover of the ESPN magazine. The full photo shoot. He was up there in the cool neon colors because we're gamers. <laughs> uh, what, what do you think about when you picked up your monthly edition of the uh, ESPN magazine? And lo and behold, it wasn't a uh, Serena Williams or Tiger Woods, but Ninja. Well, I will, I'll just let you know that um, I haven't been really picking up magazines for quite some time. Uh, it seems as though magazines are not something that a lot of people pick up on. And, and maybe that's a reason why ESPN would try to capitalize on the fact that Ninja is insanely popular right now <laughs> with an entirely new group of people who probably have never even heard of what a magazine is. Yeah. Um, that being said, I will say that Ninja's cover does look very fantasy like in the sense <laughs> that I feel like I've seen a photo shoot and I'm not going to lie. There was a there were some images of a man that was dressed up as a unicorn. If you just say man dressed up as a unicorn and you Google that, you'll see what I'm talking about. It seemed to use the same color palette. As, and so as soon as I saw the Ninja cover, <laughs> I was like, wow. He is ready to be a prancing pony. Um, <laughs> I am not surprised at the fact that ESPN is picking up on this. I mean, let's talk about this for a second, Brian. We we Stop. were like, they're bringing this into high schools. They've yeah. got colleges that are creating leagues around this, you know, around different types of games. Like it, the Olympics. Yeah. Let's just be real here. Gaming's taking over. It is taking over. Um, it's taking over YouTube again. Um, it's just, I don't know. It's its kind of like you said, it's ESPN magazine. It's a magazine. Um, I, for one, was unaware that ESPN still ran a magazine. I thought they were just a 24-hour sports sensationalist uh, channel that talked about the you know biggest drama in sports instead of what was going on. Um, I think my, I don't know if it's an issue. But I think I brought it up and every time we've talked about, you know, sport or esports coming into the mainstream is like, why do we want to be a part of them? Why do we have this drive as gamers to want to be a part of the mainstream and to be accepted by these people? Um, here Ninja is, you know, having this huge moment in his career and a, you know, talk show host uh, 
makes a joke about, well, now gamers everywhere, you know, he makes just a, a fat gamer joke about being lazy. Now you can make it to ESPN magazine. You know what I mean? Um, like, I don't know why we want the acceptance of them, why we feel like it's an accolade to be promoted on uh, their, their big magazines and such. They're awful. Mainstream entertainment's, you know, probably the worst thing in the world. Mainstream music is horrible. Um, ESPN is barely watchable. Why do we want to be a part of it? Why can't we just be on Twitch and on YouTube gaming or just YouTube? Like, why can't we just be in our own little bubble and like doing what we creating our own thing to fit what we want? You know what you sound like, Brian? Tell me. You sound like the anime club in high school where you just have a room and you're not allowed to leave your room. And if Look. you're in the room, you're in the safe area. You can be in the safe area, but you know what will happen if you go out and you show your little weeaboo self to the rest of the crowd and you dress up and you do cosplay? Because let's be real, cosplay didn't used to be fucking cool. It used to be really lame. You have to branch out. And let's and Ninja being on the cover is pissing people off. And Brian, you love pissing people off. Oh, I do. I mean, I like to stick it to someone as much as the next, you know, person. But <laughs> I, I, I just, I don't know, man. I just, I don't know. I, I think it's coming on the tail end of the Olympic discussion where they turned us down because our games are too violent. You know, they, it, we show too much violence and that's why we're not getting to the Olympics. Like, why do we want to be part of them? Like, look, stay in this room. Close the doors. Stay in this little anime room here with us. Um, how dare you? I, I am not trying to gatekeep here for the gaming community. Uh, I'm ooh, just saying, ooh, ooh. like, we don't need to be part of them. We don't need to, like, act like this is a huge deal for Ninja. I'm super stoked for him and his career and, like, the, the, the heights that he's reaching on a personal level, you know? But as just somebody who I'm like, I get nervous about mainstream stuff coming in and ruining the kind of cool culture that we have uh, built around gaming, all right? I can agree I with remember that. The grunge movement. I remember how the grunge movement and I remember, you know, ugh, what they did I to can, it. I can agree with that. I can, I can understand your point, but what I will say is that mainstream media, like trying to tap in, it's still got some time and mm. let's be real. It's probably going to happen, Brian, because this is where things are heading. I really firmly believe that. And if that's the case, we might as well enjoy all of the negativity that we receive along the ride. All of the guys going, that boy has blue and pink hair. He can't be on the cover. You know, like we cannot, like it's fucking great. Are you fucking kidding me? I, in 90, in 62, I played football and no, there are no boys looking like that. I love it. I love it. I want to piss people off. I want them to be uncomfortable and I feel like it's being accomplished. All right. You convinced me. This is the greatest thing ever. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take ESPN magazines and just take them down to the American Legion and leave them all over the tables. Oh, for all the old timers. Oh, let's do it. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> Anime Club branching out. <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for episode 75 of the Backspace No Mess podcast. If you watch this on YouTube, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you want. Also, our podcast listeners, make sure you drop a five star review for the podcast. See you guys next week for episode 76. Bye, everybody. Bye.